Uh, good afternoon. Today we will be discussing five topics. Uh, we have been given only three hours. It is very difficult to cover all the five topics in three hours. So I will try to be very fast. So it is very tough I know to be here in the afternoon after having lunch or without lunch from 12 to 3. Very difficult. But please concentrate uh, rather than your focus rather than on the slides. Just listen to what I say. So I will be covering all the three major textbooks in surgery for each and every topic to make your preparation easy. So just keep your focus. I do not want to waste much of the time. I will start with malignant melanoma. Right. Malignant melanoma is skin cancer you all know. So this accounts for 3 percent of all cancers and 5 percent of all skin cancers. But it accounts to 75 percent of all skin cancer related deaths, 75 percent of skin cancer related deaths. So that is why it is very important. So no need to write, just listen. This melanoma arises, the name itself is clear, arises from the melanocytes. So where are the melanocytes now? In the basal layer of the epidermis. Just remember BSNL, knockout N, BSGL, basal layer, spinosum, granulosum, lucidum and above it there is corneum. So at the basal layer there are melanocytes. This give the pigment melanin. So cancer of this. This is the origin. These melanocytes are origin from the neural crust. Okay. So neural crust, crust malignancy accounts to 3 percent of all the cancers and 5 percent of all the skin cancers and 75 percent of skin cancer related deaths. This melanoma has a feature of second primary in about 7 to 10 percent of cases. What is second primary? It can be synchronous or metachronous. Say for example, if a cancer has come now, a focus say on the upper limb. Suppose at the same time you see cancer on the lower limb. It is second primary of the lower limb. At the same time, it is called as synchronous. But after a gap of 2 to 3 years, if you find a cancer in the lower limb. Earlier, the patient has 2 to 3 years before the patient has cancer over the upper limb. Now he is having cancer over the lower limb. This is known as metachronous skin cancer. So this melanoma is prone in 7 to 10 percent of the patient for second primaries. So after seeing briefly about this, we will go to the risk factors. Hot, summer, ozone layer, first risk factor. If you answer, we will deal more fastly. Just participate. Ultraviolet radiation, right? First point. Next point is sunburns. People, when some of the people go out, they will have dark pigmentation. It is known as freckling. Sunburns is a risk factor. Albinism, vitiligo, xeroderma pigmentosum and nevi. Nevi and put muscle, moles, nevi. What type of nevi? So, giant nevi. Anything that is giant has a risk factor. Giant. Congenital giant nevi. Displastic nevi, name itself is there, displastic. So, congenital, displastic, junctional and compound. Four nevi you have to remember. And the fifth one is spids nevus, spids, S-P-I-T-Z. So, your questionnaire will be, which of the following is not a risk factor for melanoma? Some options will be given. One odd man will be there. It is very easy. Ultraviolet radiation. So, xeroderma pigmentosum, sunburns. And a nevi. What nevi? Congenital, dysplastic, junctional, compound and spits. Remember all this. right? So apart from this, this melanoma is also seen in immunocompromised people. So immunocompromised, you know, HIV status, people using steroids and renal failure. Okay? So in, even in immunocompromised, this melanoma is common. These are the risk factors. There are many others also. No need to worry about that. Just remember the crux of the risk factors. Now, what are the different types of melanoma, histological types of melanoma? You know anything? First and foremost in the melanoma is superficial spreading type. Right? Before I tell you the histological features, I would like to tell you a small point. Melanoma has two types of growths. One is horizontal phase and the other is vertical phase. Right? As, as long as melanoma is in horizontal phase, it is not aggressive. It is not so invasive. So, we are happy with horizontal phase. If we leave it like that in horizontal phase, 
what happens it it tends to acquire the vertical phase of growth it tends to infiltrate into the subcutaneous tissue it is at the junction of epidermis and dermis so vertical phase it will try to come out as a nodular part or go in it acquires depth so we are worried about the vertical phase so two phases of growth most common type is superficial spreading melanoma right this superficial spreading melanoma is most common and god has made in such a way that this melanoma is mostly in horizontal phase it acquires vertical phase very lately so it is an advantage if we can catch hold of this melanoma in the horizontal phase it is amenable to excision so patient will have good prognosis it can occur at any site extremities trunk or head and neck usually seen in extremities right it has a good prognosis this superficial spreading type of melanoma number 1 number 2 is nodular melanoma nodular name itself is clear i hope you can understand this nodular variety the specificity of this is there is no horizontal phase there is only vertical phase so will this be having a good prognosis or poor prognosis excellent poor prognosis directly if you find a nodular melanoma carries a poor prognosis okay. is more common in the trunk remember always extremity melanomas will have good prognosis while trunk melanomas or the trunk has poor prognosis clear superficial spreading melanoma in the extremity is good prognosis while nodular melanoma in the trunk is poor prognosis two number three is lentigo malignant melanoma lentigo malignant melanoma very good melanoma very good prognosis seen in elderly females musala vallallo over the face should i stop 